This is unreal. They bought an entire farm of like 85 cars. This little road, just the tip of the iceberg. Been invited out to central Nebraska today by a friend of mine. This is like just almost literally the true middle of nowhere. Guy collected a bunch of old Chevys and filled a farm with them. I've seen a few pictures, but really don't have an idea yet of truly what's here. He's been here over the last, I believe, three days, pulling them out of the woods, cutting trees, getting them all out into an open field lined up. And kind of a cool deal, they've actually organized like a moving party. So a bunch of his friends with trailers, myself included, We'll all be coming out tomorrow. I'm getting here tonight. I'm super excited to see what's out here and kind of film around and show everybody what we got. Wow, look at them all. Field of vintage Chevrolets ripening in the sun. These nice ones that are up here by the driveway, my understanding is they've all already been sold on a online auction that finished and people be starting to pick them up one by one probably more Fleetline Aero sedans than you'll ever see in one place in your life outside of maybe a car show more rows and rows of cars even including some 70s and 80s Cadillacs it looks like Should I have brought my trailer over? No, it's all right. You're not moving these we're just, over? We're just, there's a bunch back in the trees here. We've got oh, a stage. Oh, I see. We're going over there. This uh, other property. I just there. thought there were these three. How many are in here? Probably 20, 30 more? Or? What's that? How many are in here? Oh, probably a good dozen, I think. Oh, a dozen, yeah. yeah. Some really good ones. With all the bumper guard and center. Cool. Yep. Forty six coupe and a fifty two hard top. They're saying this guy basically went around to farm auctions for a lot of years and every forties and fifties Chevy he bought. They said most of these he didn't pay over like fifteen or twenty dollars for at the sales. And several times they said he would go to an auction and cars would like literally just be left behind and they would give them to him just for hauling them away just crazy to think about it but you know really at the time that's all they were was just old cars here comes the 46 so they said also that this guy his first car was a 46 chevy convertible and he ended up buying like a wrecked parts car for it and he went in the army like in the early 50s just before korea and when he was stationed out there in california his dad sold both of those cars while he was gone he was pretty sick over that and so he basically just kind of started buying cars and filled up the farm with them. 
not really like a true hoarder because I mean he really just was a collector they said he sold stuff here and there supposedly there were like maybe 20 56 Chevys that he had and some guy out east maybe by Omaha bought all of them I think there's a couple 56s left so in this row you've got this 47 coupe kind of a neat looking car another coupe next to it and then that 50s four door back behind them just pretty neat he had a fairly narrow focus really just 40s through early 50s chevys although I think there are a couple strays over at the other place. There's supposed to be like a 60 and a 62 and a 66. And of course it's Lincoln. They were saying that the man had seen the film The French Connection. And ever after that he was just smitten by these Lincoln Mark III's. Really pretty neat car overall. Supposedly, there's like another like really nice, pristine, preserved survivor one in one of the garages on the other farm. Probably put that one in another video. There's a ton of stuff to film out here, so probably end up breaking this into several videos. Kind of see how that goes. If you like what you see out here, be sure and subscribe to the channel. Every one of these cars was set up on blocks and the tires were removed. Supposedly there's like a whole barn full of rims and tires too. This old 1950 four door, just so well preserved. I mean, look at the patina on it. I think we're far enough out west here that the air is pretty dry. I mean, some of these cars that were a little rustier probably came from further east, and some of these ones that were a little cleaner probably from further west.
Hey, that hub still rolls. Let's put a battery in it and drive it out. Straighten it back out.
Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell Osha I'm on here. down. One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> old Ford did not get the care and attention that the Chevrolets did. It was just kind of left here flat on the ground, beached. So I'm sure the whole bottom's probably rusted out of it, but a few good parts, obviously the visor. I mean, it's, it's a two-door. It's not like it's a true coupe with the short roof or anything like that. I don't think there's even a frame under this. I think it's just the body. Pretty well on its way to being stripped out. Fulton Sun Shield exterior visor. Pretty desirable aftermarket accessory piece. The guys are saying there's supposed to be one more back in here somewhere. Uh -oh. 
Must have been one of the first ones he ever bought.
We got a penny. It's a 1943 if it's mine. It's a, it's a wheat penny. Anybody guess the year? Closest closest guess to the year gets it. Uh, 46. 40, 43 copper penny. 43 copper penny. I'm gonna hate you if it's a 43 copper penny. Hey, I, I thought you. You were the, you were the guy that gotta make the guess. Yep, and it's on video. Who said 43? Oh, it's four, ah, 46. Bingo! <laughs> I had, had to mess with you. Oh man. oh man. Wouldn't that be like just the craziest thing? That would be crazy. Like, just like this, and pull a million dollar penny out of a freaking piece of shit shoe box for it. <laughs> God, that's wild. That's got the Autronic eye. Yeah. There's some parts. I Look at those gauges. Five. I should. It's, I should take it home. It's a tilt column. It's gonna be one hell of a load for someone's single car trailer. This thing was like. This is heavy. Oh, I've. No, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I got people that don't. You know, they're not regular haulers, and you know. Oh. Put it on mine. I don't good, care. Good for your. your, your Actually, that. All right. I call whatever's in the trunk. All right. <laughs> ah, shit. Here we go. Jimmy Hoffa. We were trying to. It's. it's Find that Zach's already manifested 1943 wheat penny though. If... No, it's still calm. Yep. I had those. <laughs> I don't want it now. I got those dual stock armrests. Oh wow. Well. That's probably a thousand bucks. Oh yeah. I bought a 65 Chevy once, and they had just destroyed that glove box store. And the guy said he used to have a pistol in there. And I was like, they realized like they could just reach up and punch through the cardboard, right? Like they didn't have to sit there and like the trash the whole dash. They got a power glide car, lots of power glide cars. Yeah, I, I bet you there's, I bet you there's 20, 20 15, 20 power glide cars. Rumble seat that's cushions. Yeah, that's a really nice. Actually, someone just messaged me today about a trunk lid. Good trunk lid. There's a lot of tires in these cars. We need to look at them. You know, Gup's right. I think it's gonna be a lot of dead time tomorrow. But we need to get. I'd like to gather some today. Pulling pulling tires out, put next to vehicles would be pretty wise. Well, I guess another thing. Well, there's probably about 20, 30 I want it. Really? Yeah. You need to go more. Check out this teardrop gas cap. I've never seen one of them. It's actually hinged. Oh, cool. It's like little jerry cans. Uh, oh, it locks. Is that an accessory? Or is that, no, they had factory wasn't like that. That wouldn't have been factory. No, cool. no. I don't know why they always had water in their tank. <laughs> Jesus, got the, I need to make the on this. Got the more now. rims, more rims. I mean, there's no reason to. Not there should pull. be military artillery rims all over this place. Oh, some, someone came through and got heavy damn artillery out of this place. I've, on record, I've, I've pulled out 100 cars and dug. I've not found one 15 inch artillery rim yeah. out of this whole deal. And the, we should go up in that top of that barn. Optional passenger wiper. Are you, what time are you going to get up We're going to let people know. I'm going to have time for a tire dump. I'm going to have a crew here. I mean, it's going to take, what, two, three minutes a car, five minutes a car to throw some tires on. Especially when they're all lined up over there. I mean, I can't get to them now. I mean, let's just put tires on them. 
but we need to gather all the tires we possibly can. I'd say just a little at a time, stacking in. I mean, as you're gonna go. I got that semi. Those semi, I want our poker to match. Those semi trailers will have buckets in it. I don't have to sell those buckets. I sold, yeah. I sold 18,000 buckets in the series. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've got those, and I'm going to do all the parts and try to organize this genre. Man, that's I mean, I got a lot of parts of the, this, these cars at home too, so I need to add you know, just all, all together. Of, that's a lot of beer drinking on people over here. Oh, man. Our OCD, like, freaking. Whole row of relics of our country's transportation history. Some archaeologists someday will be able to tell a lot about this old civilization from the tin can dump. Old timer was telling me about in the 50s he had a service station and instead of getting bulk oil he got a deal on all the sealed Indian motorcycle cans from a dealership. He oh, said yeah. they bought way too many and they just sold them out when the dealership went under and he said they they just poke the holes in the cans and use them in the station and they said he buried them out back. He said there's probably half a million dollars worth of cans they buried. Guys just didn't have any any dream of what it all would one day be worth.